land of swirling sands, carved rock and color, live a people no less colorful than the land itself, the Indians. Theirs is a land of torrid heat, where hot winds whine over its vast expanse, beautiful to behold but treacherous, and humble are their homes that dot the tawny horizons. For Indians, unlike white man and his lust for worldly goods, have a patience born of wisdom. To them, all of life's elements are man's destiny, and a few head of sheep can make life lola mia. Hardships have their compensations too, for without them, how could one enjoy the mystic beauty of sunsets or starlit nights that fill one with awe and reverence? Grateful too are the Indians for the wool of their sheep, which the Navajo women weave and fashion into the rugs of exquisite beauty and skill they are famed for the world over. How many years or scores of years have their patient hands slowly woven yesterday's dreams into the reality of today? Time to these people has neither beginning nor end, for the whole of all things that have come to them and all things past is only yesterday, and out of yesterday is born their glory for today. Though reticent in the presence of most white men, the Indians are not a sullen and uncommunicated people, but a witty race that like to joke and sing. For festivities, they will travel hundreds of miles by wagon or by horseback, sometimes spending many moons en route and pitching their camps along the way. Once a year, the various tribes from the Great Plains and the entire Southwest head for Gallup, where they make a pilgrimage and in their worship, perform spectacular dances and sing old chants. Gallup, the Indian capital, breaks out in flamboyant colors and life as the banners fly and thousands of Indians congregate. Old Glory, in all her pride, opens the parade. In her wake, tread the first true Americans. Many are the brothers of this proud race whose names today go unchronicled and unsung. They are our people part of the United States. Their men fought loyally on all battlefields, giving their lives, too, in the notorious Bataan Death March that our democracy might live on. Their native dances, in all their fascinating pageantry, are danced today as by their pastoral ancestors for uncounted centuries before them. Every ritual and movement of a dance is directed in accordance with their ancient law of exactness. Indian ceremonies and dances are America's oldest form of folklore and the most colorful of all our native arts. They are the sagas of an imaginative and incredible prehistoric race. With pride and skill, the women of the Zuni tribe balance decorative pottery upon their heads. As hoary as the mountains, deserts, and canyons in which the Indians live are the legends of these people whose paths of ancient glory have been woven into a majestic tapestry by the threads of years long past. Threads of life, and threads so old, they might reveal the very beginnings of man upon the American continent, if only they had not been so tightly woven. The Apache double dancers defy the limitations of human muscles and are masters of intricate steps. At no other place in the world but Gallup may white man turn back the pages of red man's history and live anew the colorful past of this once mighty race, whose world of long ago remains to live side by side with the world of today, and whose age-old rituals, shrouded in the mist of antiquity, hold one in strange fascination long after the last beat of tom-toms have faded away. 
Amid the teeming crowds with excitement running high are the wagon wheels of Indians rolling their way to the ceremonial grounds, where tribal dancers, to the rattle of seed-filled gourds and daring bronc riders, will unfold for you a ceremony of unsurpassed beauty and skill. Yippee! Ride him, cowboy! Ride him! And how he tried. And another brave bounces forth to ride for a fall. Get on with it, cowpoke, or that little beeflet will get away. At the time William the Conqueror was invading England, the Indians of the Southwest were in their golden age of Pueblo building. And centuries before the coming of white man, Indian tribesmen garbed in their startling shaggy headdresses were doing the same buffalo dance they do today. Animal ceremonies are among the oldest of the Pueblo Indians, having been danced from time immemorial. With throbbing drums and fervid chants, the Indians dance the legends of their gods. Moccasined feet move in exquisite precision as they trace intricate patterns on the sand. Nature is the altar of this deeply pious people, whose dances are forever fraught with religious meanings. There are dances for rain and for patience to understand white man. And there are dances too for health and for the banishment of fear from tormented souls. Wow, here we go again with the Bronx. Will he make it? Not on that bucking tornado. Hang on, cowboy, lest that cayuse makes you bite the dust, and he did. Hey, rope that critter, mister. Well, not bad. Seed-filled gourds clash against the clatter of turtle rattles. Choruses chant like the sobbing of the winds through distant pines. Slowly and with dignity, they file past the proudest of men to perform their age-old ritual. This is the Red Man's world of 1,000 yesterdays, and this is Red Man's world of today. Echoes that bind the centuries together. There is no stopping their rivers of life. They flow on and on, and with them flow all their tears, their joys, and their hopes. For man is a part of that same river, and its course is his destiny. Strong of faith, the Indian never complains when his crops fail, nor when famine leers from his desert wastelands. He prays instead, with enraptured persistence as of now, to evoke the blessings of rain. Here again in dramatic form is the Indian's spiritual motivations for a better world, his supplications for happiness, and his veneration towards animals. All tribes hold that animals have the gift of speech, and many are the legends based around them. The Apaches say the coyotes brought them fire, and they respect them for that reason, while the Navajos, on the other hand, regard them as bad omens. Should one cross his path while making a journey, he will return home to wait three days before starting out again. The plodding buffalo, however, is venerated by all Indians. A daring young rider comes bucking into the scene. Pitched for a fall, all right, but up in a flash and raring to try again. This time, it's a frisky mule. Ah, gave you a laugh, too. Though most of Red Man's dances are of a sacred nature, there are some that are performed for pleasure alone. 
but in either case, they're always danced as if in answer to a powerful inner need for expression. And whether they appear in beaded buckskin costumes or naked simplicity, their figures are still impressive. Here we have the gymnastic dance of the Pueblo tribes. Leaping through hoops to weird music and chants, this handsome brave dances the last measured steps of the magnificent intertribal ceremonial. And as the sun casts long shadows over the hills, their Nehohai with white man and distant tribesmen comes to an end. And in a short while, they will start making preparation for their long, weary journey home. Back they will go to their remote and lonely Hogans, Pueblos, and Wikiups, scattered throughout the rugged canyons and desert mesas, back to their changeless and unchanging eternal pattern of life, where one century is like another, and where time stands still in eternity. Back to familiar things and scenes, where spirits come down from the mountains to murmur through leaves and twigs. Back to their wild and far-flung open spaces, where there will always be the sun, the dreamy distance, and the endless blue of the sky. And back to their ancient homelands, away from Balacanos or white man, where they may sing, dance, and worship all things of beauty in pious meditation, and where they may lift words of prayer out of the stillness and let them climb the solitudes up and beyond the stars. Unmolested and unridiculed by those whose trend of thoughts are alien to their own. Whatever the Indian is, and whatever he believes, stems from the maker of all mankind. Let us borrow a red man's prayer in saying adieu. O great spirit, maker of man, that others may say Lola Mia too, forbid that I judge any man until I have walked for two moons in his moccasins.